Hello YouTube, this is DrawingKid1313, and welcome to part 2 of my program development with C++. Uh, last time we left off, we just finally got everything to kind of, uh, you know, format correctly when we output it. Um, off camera, you know, I did do a, a few things. All right, no, I didn't do anything to the code, but I looked at a few different ways to make it more efficient, and uh, I couldn't really find anything. I don't know if this is just me or or what it is, but so we're just going to keep this way for now. So let's allow the user to enter the hour. Let's allow them to enter the hour, the minute, and let's just default to 60 seconds or 0 seconds, okay? So uh, let's go ahead, delete that, go to the end here, and we can actually assign our variables a certain value when we declare them just by saying second equals zero. Pretty easy. So now let's go ahead and allow the user to input what the hour is and what the minute is. So for this we're just going to see out. You guys have seen this before. In quotations we're going to say enter the hour with a little colon and end our quotations. Make sure you have a space right here because it's very literal, literal when you output things. If you didn't have a space right here it would just say enter the hour and whatever you enter would be right next to the semicolon and well that would bother me and it wouldn't look as nice so I'm doing it like that. So now let's go ahead and allow the user to input something. Let's just say C in with those errors. However when you do a C in this is how it allows the user to input um, input values, input data, uh, and then you have to use the arrows facing the opposite way of the C out, so make sure you have that. And let's go ahead and just allow them to see an hour. Alright, so that means that it'll say enter the hour, the user will enter in number value, and then it'll be stored into that variable that we declared as hour. So let's go ahead and do the same for minute. Enter the minute. And uh, not enter, but rather space, quotation, semicolon, and then C in minute. All right. And like I said, seconds will default to zero because, well, nine times out of ten, you're not really going to know what the exact seconds are, so might as well just start at zero. Or we can call it even and start it at 30. Mm, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so the next thing that we want is... Well, we want a way for it to actually count. We want a way for it to, you know, count up. We don't want it to just output once and then be done with it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a while statement. Now what a while statement does is it basically tests the condition that you have in your parentheses and it'll run whatever is inside these brackets, all right? So we have a start a start bracket and then we'll go ahead and have our end bracket right here, okay? And it will run through this code while this statement is true. So let's go ahead and just make a random thing. Uh, I don't know. Exit is equal to false. All right. However, there's something that we have to do here. We can't just put a single equal sign. If you may remember from here, we had to put doubles. That's well, kind of the same way with an uh, with a single equal sign. And I don't know why you have to do it like this, but you just do, so trust me. Um, now false, that is a boolean value. I believe that's how you would say it. Uh, boolean value, I hope I'm saying that right, but it can either be false or true. So let's go ahead and create a variable that will store that boolean value uh, just by typing bool and let's name it the same thing, exit, let's set it equal to false, okay? So just so that, you know, it's set as false before this code even executes, so that way it doesn't skip over the while statement. Alright, so now that we have that, we need a way for us to exit, because the way this, this is right now, this value is never changing, so this will repeat without, no matter what we say, it'll just keep re uh, repeating and outputting whatever information is in here. So, let's go ahead and make something that will allow us to uh that will allow us to exit out of the code when the user chooses for that. So we're going to make an if statement right here and we're going to say get a sync key uh state 
I believe it is, get async key state. Uh, this is very odd the way that it's capitalized. It's a uh, capital G, capital A, lowercase s, which makes no sense, and then capital K and a capital S right there. Um, and what this will allow is it'll kind of search for any input, um, you know, from the user each time this code will run through. However, the difference between this, because there's a few ways that we can get input from a user, we can do C in, we can do something else called getch, and but the reason why we don't want to use those is because when this is uh, when this is you know on the screen, it stops everything else from running, and the code will not continue until it gets input from a user. The difference, you know, well actually the reason why we're using this is because it won't stop the code. It'll you know. It'll look for it. If something is there, it'll go ahead and use that information to do stuff. But if nothing's there, then it'll just go through like nothing ever happened. So now we have to say, what is it searching for? What is the key that we're searching for for the user to, uh, you know, input? Let's do a virtual key, all right? Because this can be an integer. Uh, it can be an integer. Each key on your keyboard has a certain integer value. You can go ahead and Google that. However, an easier way to do it is just to do a virtual key and then kind of do the name of the key. This one is going to be escape. So whenever the escape key is pressed, this will go ahead and execute. What do we want to happen? Well, get get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. What do we want to happen? Well, pretty simple. Let's make everything format correctly. We want exit to be set equal to true. Okay, so exit is now set to true when this code is run. So basically the code will continue to run. Each time it'll go ahead and just search. Uh, did I want to do that? Okay. It'll go ahead and just search. Hey, has the escape key been pressed? If it hasn't been pressed, then it'll just continue on. If it has, it'll go ahead and go down to here where it'll, you know, exit. Okay, simple enough. Now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to have it exit. I'm not going to have the system pause. I'm just going to have it exit. We've already gotten our input from the user, so we don't want him to have to enter in two keys to exit out. We just want it one, and we know that if he presses escape, he wants to exit, so we're not going to ask him if he wants to exit again. Now it's kind of confusing the way I worded that, but I don't know. hopefully you get the, uh, the idea. <laughs> Alright, so the way that this is inputting, or the way that this is going, it's uh, pretty cool. However, we have no way of counting up the seconds. Am I right? So let's go ahead and do something, you know, fairly simple. Uh, we're going to make it sleep. Now we're going to say a time that we want it to sleep, and I believe that the time that we want it to sleep is 1,000. Because if my knowledge of prefixes is correct i believe this is milliseconds yeah this function uses milliseconds instead of seconds so therefore a thousand milliseconds not q1000 but 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second all right so basically this will continue running through when it hits this it'll wait a second to go to the next thing so it'll run through this code every one second now what do we want to happen here? Good question. Well, we want it to count up. So let's go ahead and do simple, very simple code and just do seconds is increasing. All right. So every time this code is run through, it'll go ahead. Seconds is increasing. And then actually, you know what? We want this to happen afterwards. We want it to happen afterwards because the way we are doing it right now, it'll go ahead and, you know, output. All right. Minute, hour and then it'll go ahead and increase it as soon as the code is run. We don't want that to happen. We still want it to wait a second before it does count up. So hopefully we have everything correct. I'm going to assume that I do. They don't. Oh, I see. I forgot a uh, parenthesis. Why is that highlighted? Um, this parenthesis is ending that that beginning parenthesis right there, so we need another one. There you go. That's not as bad as I thought it was. I was like, oh no, I completely screwed up. But uh, now this should run. Anytime now. It takes a while sometimes. 
There it is. Okay. So we're going to enter the hour. Right now it's uh, 2 o'clock. Now we're going to enter in the minute. It's, uh, you know, it's 2 or 3, so 3 is the minute. Oh, well, look at that. It's counting up. You can notice that the seconds is, you know, increasing. However, it's keeping the previous time stored. So let's go ahead and do something for that. And we're going to say clear screen. C-L-R-S-C-R. And this will clear the screen from anything that is, you know, on it. All right. Now, let's see what else. So this will clear the screen, and it will go ahead and you know output it, but in the same uh, space. So I I think that's good. Let's go ahead and have it clear the screen when it first starts. So as soon as we enter in the hour and the minute, it'll go ahead and clear the screen, and then it'll go ahead and run with the code. And then every time this code is run through, the first thing that I'll do is clear the screen. So. Oh look. Undefined reference to clear screen. This is because in the default dev C++, uh, it doesn't really know what to do with the commands clear screen because it has something to do with Kanio2.h. Now all these things right here, uh, num or uh, pound include, um, those are different files that allow you to use different functions, you know, built-in functions, um, and you know, simple things like, for example, our sleep command comes from windows.h, which is why we had to include it right there. Um, and we don't really need this stuff. So Kanye2.h, we have it included, however we have to add some uh, parameters. So we click on this little project options thing, we go to per, excuse me, parameters, excuse me again, and we go to add library or object. We then find wherever we have our dev C++ file, it should be right there, dev C++, we go into the lib folder, and we have libconio.a and libconio.unicode.a, and we just press OK, so they're now right there, and when we go ahead and press OK, our program should now know what to do with the clear screen. Enter the hour, it's 2. Enter the minute, it's 5. So there we go. It's counting up. See? So that is the seconds right there, and uh, it's pretty awesome. However, what's going to happen once we reach 60? Well, it's just going to continue to count up. It's going to go to 61, 62, 63, all the way up until whenever we tell it to stop. We don't really want that to happen. Um, oh yeah, let's go ahead and test if this uh, escape thing works. Hey, look, it does. Press escape, and it works. Awesome. Very, very happy with that. So what's going to happen when it's to 60? Well, like I said, it's just going to you know, continue counting up, and we don't want that to happen because there's only 60 seconds in a minute, and if you've ever watched a clock, well, when it reaches 60 seconds, it goes back to zero, and the minutes increase by one. So let's go ahead and have a condition that tests to see if the seconds are greater than 60. Um, let's go ahead and have it before it outputs. We'll have it you know, test for this condition before it actually outputs, because this stuff right here, this is our output. And we want to output everything after we have, you know, all our variables declared, our seconds right, our minutes right, and our hours right. All right, so let's go ahead and enter down, give ourselves a little bit of room to work with. And we'll go ahead and say if seconds is greater than or equal to 60, we could also just do greater than 59, but uh, this just makes things easier. You will find when that when you're you know writing a program, making a code, doing whatever, there are many, many, many different ways of doing things. I guarantee you that the way that I'm showing you is not the most efficient, not the most organized, but it does work and uh, is pretty good if you're just a beginner. Uh, but yeah, like I said, many different ways to do things. So what do we want to happen if seconds is greater than or equal to 60? Well, the first things first is they're going to want to set seconds equal to seconds second percent 60. 
Now what this little percent sign will do, it's you know one of those top uh, operators like uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. This is the percent. I forget the exact name of it, but we're just going to call it the percent function, even though it doesn't really have anything to do with the percent. What it will do is it will divide seconds by 60 and give you the remainder. So for example, if seconds was equal to, let's say it just finished counting up, and seconds is now equal to 63. All right, so seconds is equal to 63. What this will do is it will divide seconds by 60, so 60 divided by 63 is not a whole number. Since we have seconds being an integer value, it cannot be a decimal value, so it will automatically round it to wherever it has to be. It will divide it by 60 and give you the remainder of that. So when you take 63 and you divide it by 60, you get a remainder of 3. All right. So basically, if it's above 60, it will be reset to below 60 and, you know, all that fun stuff. The other thing that we want to happen is we want minute to increase. All right. So minute is going to increase. So when seconds is greater than 60, let's just go ahead and do minute plus plus. All right. Because this should only happen every 60 seconds anyway. So when we run through this code, minute should be equal to uh, you know, one plus. So let's go ahead and just test this by setting seconds equal to something close to 60, being 50. And let's go ahead and run this. Let's see how it works. Hoping it does right. All right, so it's going to say, enter the hour. It's 2. It's 10. And it's going to count up 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 6. There we go. That was perfect. That was beautiful. So glad that worked. All right, so there you go. Now, whenever it reaches 60 seconds, it's going to go, you know, minute is going to increase by one, and it's also going to reset the value of seconds because we're using the same value as we, you know, used to store the seconds. So seconds is no longer going to be greater than 60. It's going to be reset to zero. All right, simple enough. Now, we also have to do a similar thing to minutes and hours because there can only be 60 minutes in an hour, and there can only be 12 hours in a day. So we're going to have to do this next episode in part three because it's already been about 17 minutes, almost 18 at this point. So just like the last episode, tell me in the comment section what you think about this, if this has helped you, if you want to con continue to see these types of things, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it's been Drawing at 1313 with some C++ programming. Hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you join me next time. Till then, I'll see ya.